Hi there everyone, welcome back. Um, painting number three for my charity um, exhibition. Now actually, actually I have a confession. It's painting number four. Okay, we did the one you can see behind me there, that side. We did that and we also did, uh, let me see if I can show you that one up there. Behind my head. So we did that one and this one, didn't we? That was two. But I also did another one, which I didn't do a tutorial on because I already have it on my, my, my YouTube channel. It's the Dark Hedges. Now it's already there um, on my channel, so I thought I would do another one for the exhibition because I think it's a real, real eye-catching painting, isn't it? And I just added a little extra light into the painting. So I said, look, there's no point in doing a second tutorial on the very, very same painting, is there? Um, it's pretty much the same as the one on my channel. I just it's a little bit lighter, just a little bit. Um, I'll show you, I'll turn the camera around here and show you. So, that's the one I did. Now it looks very, very yellow in that, doesn't it? Because, I don't know, is it this, the filter on this camera? Or something to do with the lighting? I don't, I'm, I'm not too sure. But that's the, that's the painting I did, the dark edges. Um, I think that would be really nice that one is framed and hanging up there and you know people are walking around looking for some nice artwork and I think this will really, really stand out from the crowd, don't you think? Uh, it's the very very same as the one I did on my channel that's already there. Um, I just kind of added a bit more yellow and kind of green into this one, that's all. Um, so let me kind of just zoom in slightly for you there and you can see the colouring a bit better there now can't you? Uh, so that's it, it's the, pretty much the same painting. So I think this will be lovely hanging in that exhibition. So I can call this painting number three, okay? Now I do have a quick kind of a, a time-lapse tutorial of this on my Facebook page. It's only about six minutes long, but you can just see the process of me doing it very, very quickly. Um, so you can go and check that out if you like. It's um, at Stephen Conway Art on, fa on Facebook. Um, but yeah, so that's number three. So we have painting number one for the exhibition. I'm very very proud of this. Very proud. Painting number two for the exhibition and painting number three and painting number four is going to be, let me turn the camera, you have to see me, let me take a seat. Painting number four, this, this tutorial, I'm thinking a nice snow scene, a nice maybe perhaps kind of a sunset type of a snow scene. So pinks and reds in the sky blues, kind of mauves, purples, uh, some nice warm clouds up there and some nice kind of bluey snow on the ground. Now I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to paint. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking about, you see I want to paint something that people are going to recognise. So when people are walking around in this bar looking at all this fantastic artwork, people like to see um, something familiar. So a part of Cork City for, for instance. So I'm trying to think of something nice. I was thinking about doing the shaky bridge. I already have one on my channel as well. The shaky bridge kind of looking across the shaky bridge but the opposite direction and the sun kind of going down in the sky. Very kind of sunsetty sky and snow along the bridge and snow along the rails, this kind of side rails, the, the handrails of the bridge as well. Um, and some lovely striking kind of shadows then on the bridge. I'm just kind of toying with that kind of idea at the moment. Um, it would probably be a two-part tutorial again. Now the one I did already on my channel, the Shaky Bridge in Cork, is a summer scene. So it's just all green trees and blue sky, that type of thing. So I think a sunset, kind of a snow scene in that painting would be lovely. And a real, real eye catcher again, hanging on a wall. And people from Cork, anyone from Cork would know about the Shaky Bridge immediately when you say the word shaky bridge everybody knows the shaky bridge so i'm thinking that's one that might sell i want to do something that i think is going to sell easily um you know i was tempting to do something with a building or something like that but a lot of people like the scenery especially people from cork they love scenery so i was thinking about doing that you know um yeah but look I'll mount up the camera and I'll get my cameras and stuff set up here and explain to you my setup and we'll, we'll go from there, alright?
Don't go anywhere. Okay, you should see the picture on your screen there. Uh, that's a shaky bridge. Now I know I've done this before in another tutorial, but I thought I would use this um, for the exhibition because it's a real eye catcher and a lot of people from the city who are going to be at the exhibition will know where it is and it's a very kind of um, it kind of has a lot of meaning for a lot of people. So I thought I'd do this but I'm going to change the colours. I'm going to turn this into a snow scene. Yes? Um, now I have a sky which I picked out so I'll put that I'll put that sky above the picture I think. Would that be the best way to do it? So I'm going to put a nice snow kind of a sunsetty sky here. Cool sky with a little bit of warmth and we'll have some lovely snow then on the bridge and uh, some lovely kind of shadows being cast from that kind of sun way off outside of the painting so that's the general idea so let's just have a go see what we can do and I'm going to be kind of you know making this up as I go along I have no idea how it's going to turn out so let's just try it now my colours um, I have titanium white I have Naples yellow I have cadmium yellow pale I have nathol crimson a little bit of cadmium red some burnt umber, some lamp black, and a little cobalt blue. Um, I was going to put out some um, magenta, but I'm not sure. I might still put out a little magenta later. I'll see. I'll see how I go with the colours. So this is it. Let's do a quick sketch. All right. Now I'm going to find where the the bridge ends. So the bridge ends around here, doesn't it? So I just put a little line across there like that. Um, I'm just, it's only just for reference, that's all. And it kind of comes almost straight on, but I'm going to bring it out a little further than that. Um, I might even go a little bit further off in the distance with that there, look, just like that. So that's the end of our bridge. Um, we have kind of a wall, now you see there's a wall along there, if you look at the photographs, there's a wall going along, off in the distance like that, right? But normally, normally that would be covered in very, very thick trees. So I think I'm just going to put trees off in the distance here. Um, I'm not going to put too much detail. The details are really going to be in this bridge, you know. So I'm just going to focus really on putting kind of just these trees in here off in the distance. Now there's going to be a bit of sunlight here. And this sunlight is going to cast a lovely shadow across on the bridge like this. That's my, well that's my plan anyway, I, I hope it goes the plan. So let's just try it, a um, couple of trees along there, then we have a bit of a field in behind there don't we, and I'm going to put another little ditch, and this is going to be all the railings, so the hand railing from the bridge will come along here, and all I'm doing now is putting just lines suggesting some lines here and there just to help with perspective okay we have all these trees again now there's a couple of houses back off in the distance again I'm going to let those out and we have lots of trees down in here then don't we this is all a kind of tree it's all bushes and trees we have a couple of big ones kind of coming along here sticking out then on this side, we have like the little footpath, which comes at a slight angle, just like that. And then there's little bars on top of that. And we have these little archways. There. And they come right down. And these arches now would be a very prominent feature also, so I will try and get them in as well as I can. And then we just have a kind of a footpath at the land here, where it meets the water's edge basically. But we can kind of make a lovely mist down here later on. So that's it. That's my sketch done anyway. Uh, brushes, here we go. Brushes after ready. I will use my stubby green brush. Lovely little brush, and if you want these, just email me stephenconnell12 at gmail.com. Just email me and I can get these brushes off to you. So I have a little drop of turpentine, 
and I have some tissues down here, some tissues in my hand. Now let me just turn the screen on the camera down slightly so I can see this exactly, yeah. So you can see everything pretty much there now. So that's Sky. Um, I'm going to put the warm side here. Because remember, I want to put some nice shadows on that bridge. So I'm going to dampen my brush, dip it into your turps, soak up turpentine, and then just dab it on a tissue. Okay? We don't want it soaking wet, but we don't want it completely dry either, do we? And let's take some white. Go on here with some white. And let's take some cobalt blue. And then, let's try some of that crimson colour. Now, if that's a bit too, you can see that's very kind of thick and creamy now for me. I'm going to just dampen it very slightly. I'm going to just dip this corner into the turpentine. Just to get a little, only a little, you see? And a tiny bit of turpentine does help. It goes a long way. And let me just check here now. My sun is going to be on this side. So let's put this blue mauve colour along here. And you can see it's quite wet, isn't it? Let's darken it slightly. More cobalt blue, more of that crimson. And now we're putting slightly thicker paint on here. <coughs> so I just want to get kind of a nice sky. It doesn't have to be exactly like what we're painting. Um, but you know, just a nice warm kind of a snowy do you know that kind of a snowy evening when the sun is going down and there's lots of pinks and purples up in the sky? That kind of, that kind of a sky. That's what I'm looking for. So I've just added more red there now into this mix. And let's go for some cadmium red with some white. And I'll take a touch of cobalt. So as it's coming across, it's going to get warmer and warmer and warmer, all the time. <coughs> and there's something over there I'm making noise that's bugging me. There, no. It's, that's just so annoying sometimes when you're painting and something just keeps making noise and there's a rattle somewhere. Maybe it's just me. Have a little touch of OCD perhaps. Now, again, warm colour. I may, I'm just thinking now, will I use some magenta? No, I don't think we do, do we? Right. Um, I dampened my brush again, picked up some white, picked up some cobalt blue. And I do want it nice and cool over on this side, so I'm just going to pull that blue over into that red there look and by the way i will add paint to this because it's still quite thin so more cobalt blue again and as it's a snow scene i want a lot of blue in it um you know cool blues against the nice warm colors will really complement each other so i want to create a kind of a certain effect on this sky and um, you know I suppose it's just a case of playing it by ear isn't it and see see how it develops now I'm going to start lightening it so I'm just going to get this blue off my brush I'm going to dip it into my turpentine all the way in it's soaking and then I'm going to dry it well on my tissue look get all that blue off and I'm going to do it again and then get all that colour out well that should do Okay, it's pretty clean. Um, some cadmium white, or some titanium white, some of that crimson colour, and a touch of Naples. That's a nice warm pink, isn't it? Well, oh, soften all those colours together there, where they meet. And let's go back into our Naples yellow and our crimson. 
Now, alizarin crimson will do just fine for this. If you don't have the natal crimson, which I'm using, alizarin crimson will do fine. Uh, this is just a slightly redder version of alizarin. I kind of stumbled upon it one day because the store had no crimson. Um, alizarin crimson left. I just I just picked this one up. It was natal crimson, so I thought, well, I'll just try it. And, uh, yeah, lovely colour. So I tend to use it from now on. Right, I'm just going to go that far. And I'm going to try and soften a lot of these colours now just in together with my normal green stubby brush. What are we looking? Nice, nice warm sky up there. Well, I'm going to take my soft blender. Well, it's not so soft anymore because I cleaned it with turpentine by mistake, which I shouldn't have, and it's kind of gone all, kind of, it's all thick and sticky. So let me see if I have another one here somewhere. Yeah, this one will do. Okay, soft blender brush. I'm we'll soften some of those in, just to get rid of some of the marks, the brush marks. You probably have a big soft mop brush or size, you just use that. But I'm just used to using this one, so this is what I use. Um, I was going to paint a mono kind of a monochrome tone kind of a painting this week, a black and white, with a splash of colour somewhere. But I really feel this will kind of sell in my exhibition so I'm just going to go for something like this something just to really kind of catch your eye again lovely warm colours um, okay so it's going to start getting yellow down here I need to clean my brush dip it in clean it on your tissue and let's take some titanium white and let's go into our pink here um, some Naples yellow some cadmium yellow and let's take some of the crimson so that's kind of going orangey now, isn't it? Nice orangey colour. Soften that across there. I'm not going down into my trees. Normally I might bring it down into my trees, but not this time. Let's just soften that colour across. As it comes across, I'm going to add a touch more red to it, so I don't want this going green. See? Because it's mixing with the blue. So that will avoid any green. Now I'm going to start adding more cadmium. So cadmium yellow, some cadmium red, and Let's go in here with some cadmium yellow, cadmium red. So it's mixing with the colour underneath then, you see. Softening it all together nicely. So now we have a lovely light spot, don't we? Over here. Now it might still look a little bright, so I might tone that down slightly. Let's take a tint of crimson and cadmium together in there and look we can soften it down slightly take the the bite out of it as it were so let's soften that okay. backwards and forwards Soften that in. There we go. How's that looking? You see, we have a nice, nice warm sky out there, don't we? Next, I'm going to take a small flat brush. I'm going to start adding a little cloud. Now, hmm, I was toying with the idea of just letting it like this, but I think a couple of nice clouds would bring it to life, wouldn't it? So let's try a couple. Um, I put a couple of nice warm ones coming across here first, okay? So let me just clean my brush and make sure it's nice and dry, okay? Nice dry brush. And I'm going to take some 
of this crimson and I'm going to take some burnt umber give that a little mix there and this now is a bit dark so I'm going to take a touch of white in there okay a little touch and then I might put a touch of cobalt blue into that as well just a touch so it's a nice kind of a plum colour and let's add a couple of clouds now coming down this this way just like this and they're kind of swooping down across the painting aren't they so that's my now I didn't put too much blue into this because if you put too much blue into that mix it'll go green with the yellow you see so I'm keeping this kind of on the red side if you understand and just for a couple of flicks of those just here and there look see Again, I won't overdo this. So let's go down here and go into that yellowy colour. And it will be slightly warmer off in the distance. So more red. There we go. So I'm just going to soften those very, very gently now. Very gently again, pulling them down in that direction, look. Just like that, nice and gentle. Hardly touching the paint. And I'm going to put a little highlight then underneath those to suggest that the sun is kind of hitting, hitting the bottom of those clouds. So I'm going to take, now let's have a look at this. Um, I'll try some yellow with a little titanium white and perhaps a touch of crimson. Just a little touch, so a warm salmon kind of colour and just along underneath those little flick here and there and again see just there here and there under those clothes so the sun is hitting the bottom of those clothes now the sun is going to be out of the painting I'm not going to put a big, big, bright sun right in the middle of the painting there. Um, I want it to be kind of slightly out, outside. So even though it's still a light source, you can't see where the light is coming from. Because otherwise, it'll just get uh, complicated and we'll be trying to get sun rays and all that kind of stuff in. But I don't want to, I don't want to make it too busy. Do you understand? Now I'm just going to sort so soften these very gently in there again okay and I'm going to add a touch of the bright yellow just coming in to that side over there so let's take some cadmium yellow some cadmium red and a touch of white and I'm only mixing tiny tiny bits of this now when I'm mixing okay just little bits there you see and look I'm just going to bring some of it in there and there just a little so it's just coming in there now let's have a look I'm going to put some of the white um, what I would call tracers white tracer clouds so are these kind of white clouds kind of flicking across here and there now we've done this in the last painting as well and it kind of looks quite nice in the painting when it's finished. So let's put a couple of those in just here and there. Now again, don't overdo this. You would be tempted to kind of put lots of these in across the painting. I'd say just a couple. And again, I'm going to soften those down. So everything is softening now nicely into the paint. And the paint on my canvas now, by the way, is very thin. There's no real thick layers of paint on this canvas. So all this background colour was done very, very thinly. Understand? Um, now, let me just sit back for a second, take a look. I think I'll put some nice bright clouds in here. 
I'm going to take another brush and let's go for just an arm and old look an old worn brush anything like that let's take some white and some of that nice bright color that we had earlier so a touch of cad a touch of crimson and a touch of Naples and let's just put a couple here so these ones are going to catch the sun now again so you can see I've kind of taken the technique from the old the last painting we did taking that technique and again you know it'll be worth it when it's finished won't it and we're going to soften some of these into the sky here and there I'm just kind of flicking it around, look, not being too fussy, just give it a little flick and then let's come along with more thick white paint and that's making it more pink as it goes across there, look, look at that, that's nice now isn't it. And let's soften that gently back into our painting, into our blue sky so I think in the end all of these paintings for this exhibition will have a kind of a certain theme running through them if you understand what I mean colour wise so they'll have very very kind of similar colours won't they? Um, Put another one just here, okay, just one, kind of floating along on its own up here. Like so. And I think we should probably just leave it because if we fiddle, we could make it worse, couldn't we? Could end up spoiling it. I don't want to spoil it. So, yes, I think we leave it at that. Now, I'm going to darken this corner up here because it's just a bit too pale for me, for my liking. I want to make it slightly darker, so I'm going to take some cobalt blue, some of the crimson, I'm just going to go right in with that thick colour and I'm going to darken in fact more blue so plenty of blue in there and look I'm going to cover this colour I just painted because I was looking at the picture and I just wasn't happy with that colour it was just a bit, a little bit too pale for me I want to really give it a nice strong colour so yeah let's just come on let's just go for it that's the worst that can happen. It's only paint at the end of the day. I well, don't I keep saying it. That's all it is, it's just paint and a bit of canvas. If we spoil it, we can just start again. Okay, let's soften that. There we go. And I'm going to put more along here, just soften that right in. How's that looking? Is that a bit better? I think that's better. I would say it's a little better anyway. Okay, I'm going to clean my blender brush here now really well. There's bits of blue and all sorts of things on this. And I'm going to start my tree line. So with the trees, let me just clean my other brush that I have here. I need to find the brush now for these trees. Um, okay. I think this will do. So the trees, they're going to be slightly warmer on this side and get slightly cooler here. So I'm going to start off now with a dry brush and I'll take some burnt umber 
and I'll take a touch of crimson and I might try that first just here and also bear in mind I'm going to be putting snow on these so think of that after it try and think one step ahead so what I'm doing now is I'm thinking a step ahead so if I'm putting snow on these later right um, it's going to be a kind of a, a whitey pink kind of snow and that will complement this brown lovely then you see so I'm just filling this in now very roughly let me just dampen that very very slightly there because it's a little just a little on the dry side so I'm allowing for the fact that um, there's going to be snow on these very very soon and I'm gonna, I'm gonna then soften that snow color into all this okay so I'm just walking along and it's blending nicely now with that color in the distance as well it's softening off nicely now I'm gonna go up a bit higher with these here because they're quite high on that photograph aren't they so let's take some more brown um, touch of crimson and I'll take a touch of white so it's a nice pasty thick colour but it's quite pale at the same time and I am going to add some blues and pinks into this in a minute so I'm just going to just get a rough kind of a rough form on some of these and again, you don't have to copy the picture exactly, you can make it your own. Now what I'm going to do is take some cobalt blue and some of that crimson colour, lots of red, and I'm going to start adding the pinky colour into the end. Let me get some more of that. Crimson, some cobalt. And I'm going to soften that right up there, okay? Soften that up. And let's take some more blue and put some more blue into this. So I've just been very quick, look very messy with this, just messing about with these colours um, I do want it very dark along the bottom so I'm going to take some cobalt blue touch of black and some of the crimson and I'm just going to put that in just along the bottom here and there's a, there's a reason all that I'm sticking with crimson I'm not doing cadmium red because crimson is a nice pinky colour for snow scenes that's exactly what I want. Oh, see, some cobalt blue and so on in here. So they're not going to start turning blue, aren't they? Very cool. Nice cool trees. Let me take a touch of black for that bottom. Again, I want this really dark and really blacky blue down at the very end down here and by the way I'm, I'm not even looking at the reference photograph now anymore I'm just kind of going along with this my own way okay um, it's only for the drawing side really after that the colours the colours just come on their own So there, okay, softening them up. Now it's sitting back just for a minute, take a look at this. So now we have some nice warm colours here, you see, showing where the sun is showing through. And I might switch, I'm thinking I'm going to switch brushes. No, I go, I keep going with this brush, yes. So let's start adding more blue now as we come across. So let's take some of that crimson again and let's take cobalt blue 
So it's a lot more blue now in this. That's pink, let's put more blue. There. Because you see, the trees in this photograph, they do kind of vary from year to year. So each year they're completely different. Uh, sometimes they might cut down some of the big ones. Um, you know, so it's always different every time you look at it. So you can kind of use your, I suppose, artistic license to um, create whatever kind of trees you like. No, so I've just been very, very rough with this. In fact, no, I start coming down a bit here. And let's add a bit more pink and a touch of burnt umber even. In here. And be very, very free with this. I really, you know, it's my painting. I'm just going to mess around with it and have a bit of fun. I'm not taking it very seriously. I'm really not because I find if you take something too seriously, um, you spend too much time worrying about the little things and trying to get it absolutely perfect every time. And it's just you don't need to do that. I, I, I don't anyway. I prefer to leave it kind of just flow off as a brush. Well, get a bit of dark in here. And a bit of dark on that side of the tree up there. I'm basically just dabbing the brush. Just dabbing and then flicking it around in circles and all sorts of stuff. Look, just having a bit of fun. And let's get really dark down in there. Like so. I'm doing it this dark now for a reason. Because the snow will show lovely then when you put the snow on. Understand? So now you can see we have some lovely transition of nice colours. So I started off with warm kind of reddy browns. Well, pinky browns. And that's the reason I used the crimson on this side. Because if I use cadmium red, it would look more like an orange, an orangey brown. Whereas the crimson is more of a pink. So it gives it a pinky tone, a warm pinky tone. So you can see it's lovely and warm here. And it goes slightly into a cooler colour then, doesn't it? And that's what I was trying to achieve. That's exactly what I was trying to achieve. So I did my job. Um, okay. I'm thinking... Snow. Shall we get some snow on these, yes? How about that? And this is where we have to be careful. So I'm going to give this brush a good clean now because I like this brush. And this brush will be perfect for snow. Because, and I'll show you why... Um, the way it's kind of splayed. So if you look at this brush, okay, now let me show you close in the camera. If you look at that brush, you can see it's really splayed out almost perfectly, isn't it? Right? Now that'll be okay for trees, but it'll be tricky to use this kind of a brush for trees. What I want is something that's really worn on the sides here. So you can see this one, it's splayed out, but the sides are kind of worn down, aren't they? You see? And that's the kind of brush I love using for trees. You can see the difference. So this one needs to be worn down just a little bit more. But this now is a perfect tree or brush for doing little snow on trees. Let me show you. Um, and also, this smaller one, you can see? See the similarities? They're very similar, aren't they? And it's just wearing down the brush, that's all. <clears throat> Here we go. Time for fun. Snow on trees. Okay, a relatively clean brush, and I need to get me some of my crimson, because my crimson is gone. And uh, again, thank you so much for all the support and all your views and your subscribe. Do you know, thank you so much for everything that you're doing for me. It's really given me loads of confidence. And, um, you know, I'm getting more and more viewers every, every day, every, every week I'm getting more and more subscribers. And uh, it really means a huge amount to me. And again, thank you everybody on Patreon because, you know, your support really goes a long way to keeping these tutorials going, to buy materials, canvases, paints, you name it, you know. So, thank you so much. Okay, now let's go. A little bit of crimson. 
You can see that was only a tiny, tiny bit on the brush. Tiny bit. Because it's a very strong colour and plenty of white. Loads of white. So we have a very whitey pink now, don't we? And I don't know if this is showing on camera. I really don't know. But it's a really whitey pink in front of me. And I'm just going to load my brush up with this. So you can see what I have on my brush. Let me zoom in here for you. Okay. And because the sun is on the left hand side off in the distance, it's going to be on, the snow will be on the left. So I'm just going to dab. Now I'm just trying this first. Dab very gently just on the left hand side here first. Over that brown. And then soften it back into the darker colour. How's that? Now when you get some dirt on your brush, some dark colour, give it a little rub, just like that, okay? Now, my brush is getting loose there, see it? So I'm just going to put a bit of masking tape around this brush. There's no point in turning it in the bin. It's a, fight. it's a perfectly good brush. It just needs a bit of tape. Look at that. See? Suddenly we have a new brush again. i tell you something. Right. Let's go on this one here. No, that's better. And I'll put a few down. I cut in front of that then you see and create another little bush or a tree down here. Okay. You following that? Again, clean off. You see the dirty paint on my, my brush? Just give the tip of your brush a wipe. And then go back into your white again. And let's try this one here. So I'm going along and you can see I'm holding my brush at an angle of where the tree is falling. So it's falling downwards like that, so my brush is going at an angle like that. Okay, you following that? That's, and that's it, that's how easy it is. Now let's try this one. Okay, I'm carving my brush around as I dab left and right, left and right. Bring it back into the darker colour. And this now is only the first stage. Alright, I will be putting brighter highlights on this in a minute. So let me just go down here and create another one. Okay, just like that. And very gently softening it back in there. Isn't that lovely? And I enjoy taking my time with a picture like this because when I first started YouTube, I was really kind of flying through them, trying to get them done very, very quickly in one lesson. And they were very kind of amateur, mediocre paintings. And since I kind of started taking my time with, with the part one and part two, you can see the difference immediately, can't you? You really, really can. Well, I can. Now, mix more, take a touch of Naples yellow with that. Let's get slightly brighter. Okay, you see? Slightly brighter colour. I'm just dabbing the brush here and there. And the brush is just creating lots of different little, it's almost like little leaves on the tree. Isn't it brilliant? And you can also use your little green stubby brush for this, the medium one. Um, when it's kind of worn down, it's absolutely perfect for this kind of work as well. Um, so let me just take, now I might start making a bit more a mauve kind of a colour. Let's try some of that. So a little blue and a little red. Now I had some mixed hair already, I just added a bit of white into that. That's all I did. Let's try a little of that. Now because we're moving to the blue tree, we can actually make it more blue and white. So cobalt blue with some white. And there's already a touch of red on the palette. Let's try this. Ah, it's not bad at all.
Okay. Keep going, dabbing very, very gently. Let's have a look at that. That's lovely, isn't it? And so I'll do with just one little brush and just dabbing. Dab, 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 dab. Just be careful with the dabbing. What I will say to you is, if you're painting trees like this, don't overdo the dabbing. Don't dab too much because you end up with a very muddy um, tree. So I just kind of, I don't go over the same spot more than once or twice at the most. So I might just dab in different places all the time and leave it. I won't keep dabbing because that's when you get the much hated mud on your painting. And I don't like mud, not one bit. So let's get some tissue here. And let's take some cobalt blue, some white. And I'm only using little bits of paint now, okay, you see? I'm not filling my brush completely with paints. I think that's the trouble that a lot of beginners, including me, would have made when I was beginning, starting out, using loads of paint on my brush. And you really don't need to. A little bit goes a long way. So let's go along this whitey blue here. Ah, oh there. Look at that. Now that's better, isn't it? Again, give it a clean and go back in there again. Go for it. I have more white again on my brush, so I'm going to go over just a little bit here and there, see? And I'm going to even, in a minute, I'm going to put some nice warm colour, like this, kind of reflecting on the trees here and there. So yeah, it's uh, coming on nicely, I must say. A little bit on the tips there, where the sun might be catching those. Um, anyhow, we have to show a little bit of snow on them, don't we? Uh, let's get some pink into that. Put some pinky colours over here. And let's go with some pink and some Naples yellow. And we could even add a touch of that colour look to some of those, just to suggest the, the sunlight kind of catching the trees just here and there, that's all. Now, more Naples yellow, and let's just put a dab here and there on these, look. So although it's snow on a tree, it's still a very warm, reflective kind of a colour. Okay, let's stand back and have a look. Now how do they look? I am quite happy with those, I have to say. Now I'm going to put some stalks and some tree trunks and stuff like that in. Let's take a very small tiny brush, okay? Look, it's Galleria 00. That's the size, very, very small. Now, let's get some brown. Just a little turpentine, some burnt umber. And let's suggest a couple of stalks just kind of creeping through, a couple of branches creeping through just here and there. Off in that distance, look. It just brings to life, doesn't it? Adds a bit of life into the painting. So just a few, pick out a couple here and there, and then clean our brush, and let's try it with some lighter colour. Let's pick up a little of that white pinky colour there, and go into the dark. See, and that will show lovely in the dark area. So it's light against dark, dark against light. Okay, and it just it adds a little bit of interest to the painting, that's all. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. 
So again, I think this will be a very eye-catching painting when it's finished. So let's uh, have a look now and see. I stand back and I have a quick look at this. See how it looks. Now that's quite nice, isn't it? So let's do the let's do this side. I think we'll put a kind of a very snowy field in here. So again, I'm going to take um, some white, some cobalt blue, and let's just put that color across there. And let's take even some of that pinky color. Add that in. And cut across under those trees with that colour, look. And if you pick up some of the colour from the trees, that's brilliant. That'll give us some tone and some contrast. You see what I mean? And then with my flat brush, I'll take some white. I'll take a touch of uh, blue. And I'll put a couple of bits of that across just here and there. Just to give that impression of the snow in the field. Now, just very, very loosely done, you see? And what I might even do is I might even soften that line there. So let's imagine it's a nice misty kind of a snowy day. Okay, there's lots of kind of fog and stuff like that around the place. That's a bit better. And it just takes the edge off of that line there. So we have that part done. Um, let me just have a quick look around here now and see how we're doing. Uh, we could get this side of the bridge in here and then focus on the trees coming up this side. So we'll keep all the colors nice and similar now, you see. So I think that's what we'll do. So let's uh, put a nice dark color. Now it's just, in real life it's a dark gray wall, basically. So let's just break it a nice, make it a nice dark bluey bluey grey kind of a colour first, just to begin with. So plenty of cobalt blue and because we want to complement colours let's take a touch of cadmium red in this. So you can see the colour that I was talking about, yes? And let's just paint over all of these because I know that they're there. Let's take some burnt umber into this. So you see, this is going to be really dark because it's down here in the shadows of the painting, isn't it? So it's going to be very dark. Let's take some more blue, some black, touch of cadmium red. And let's put that in there, look. A nice dark colour. And I'll paint in the arches when all this is finished here, okay? So let's paint it across. So I hope you're having a bit of fun now with this painting. Um, or even you can take sections of this painting and make it your own. Um, maybe it's a piece of the trees or something. And practice those. I don't mind. As long as you enjoy it, that's all that matters. Isn't that right? That's the most important, most important part of any painting. As long as you enjoy it. See, I'm scrubbing this on now, it's quite dry. And I'm just going to scrub it on. And I'm going to bring this this, gra this kind of snowy grass across the other side. So again, with your little brush, take a touch of blue, take plenty of white. And let's continue that across there and just leave it disappear. Now, there we go. How about that? So now the painting is coming together, isn't it? And you can see there wasn't even that much drawing in the painting. Or sketching. It was just a couple of lines here and there. A simple job. That's all I need to do.
So fill all this in nice dark colour. Black, blue, bit of red, bit of brown. All sorts of colours. I want to pull that down. And I'm going to add some black just along the bottom here. That's really dark and some blue as well actually. And let me just soften that up. I just want to get a nice soft tone like that all the way up. There we go. So all of this is going to be nice and dark down here now and then we'll have a nice bright bridge with some snow. And the bridge will really show then against all these dark colours. Do you understand? Well that's the plan. That's the plan, let's hope it works. So let's do our um, little arches. We have little arches here and there. Before I do that, I'm going to put in with my palette knife the footpath coming down here, okay? So there's a footpath coming across here. So you walk across the bridge and you come down a little ramp down off in here and there's a little a big park area on the left. So there's actually like a footpath on the top of this wall here. So I'm going to get that in with my knife. So some of that bright snowy colour and let's just pull that down at a slight angle like that. There we go. couple of times let's leave it at that and then we have our archways now I'm going to just pick some very simply some pink and some blue and let's just put them in with that okay so let's start it's the first archway there There's another one next to it here. Am I doing one side? Very simple. Little curve and straight down. Because you see, this is in the shadow, so you're not going to really pick them out that much. Um, you know, you try to imagine what it's going to look like in a snow scene. And I would imagine that they're going to be very dark and hardly even noticeable. So yeah, let's just put an impression. Then I'll take my small brush, nice dark colour, just some black. And we'll go around that little outline. Nice and easy, keeping it simple. And let's even go around the other side of the arch like this. And it's just very, very simple brush strokes, that's all. Okay, now I'm going to put little pillars in between the arches. So let me take some red and a touch of brown and some white so there's little pillars in between these just separating these you see so I'm just going to pull with my flat brush a little bit down here and there
just to create that impression and then it put a very dark line just behind those, a little shadow and then the fun part is coming up the fun part is lovely mist along the bottom of these and that's going to be fun, so let's do that I'm going to take a very old warm brush a dry brush and I'm going to take some cobalt blue here, look, my little tiny bit of cobalt blue that I've left. Plenty of white. And I'm just going to go along the bottom of this and go mad. Okay, a lovely mist along the bottom of that. Oh, too much pink there on that. I'm just adding a touch of pink into it. Around the circle, scrubbing it right into the canvas there now. Right in there. And I'm cleaning my brush every couple of strokes, okay? Just giving it a wipe to keep my brush clean. That's how I keep my colours nice and clean in between. There we are, look. Give it another clean. Pick up more white, back in there again, and then with this brush, soft brush, soften it across, and then soften it up as well. Very, very, very gentle. I'm hardly even touching the paint now with this. I'm hardly even touching it. Okay? Stand back and take a look at that. A lovely mist we have. Lovely, lovely mist. Now you could maybe brighten some parts of that a little. So, for example, I might just highlight um, some areas. So, for instance, some white and some blue. And I might just highlight some parts of the snow up here first. And with the same colour, I might highlight some of these pillars. Just a little, you see, just a hint here and there. And then soften it down. Okay. And let me see now, let me see. Um, we have some black railings across here. I'll put those in, I think. Yes, I'll put those in. So let's get some black. And let's put a dark black railing just down here for people to hold on to as they're walking down this ramp. And we put some uprights on this. So when it mixes with the colour underneath, I just dry my brush. Because this is all wet into wet painting. Some of you may like it, some of you may not, but this is the way I like to paint. There we go. Um, okay, I can put a hint of snowy colour here and there. Just some of that whitey blue colour. And perhaps just here and there on those uprights as well. So now, how is that looking? There we go. A 
I think a few highlights just here and there. And now I'm going to step back and have a good, good look at this. I think, yeah, I'm very happy with that. I'm going to call that part one finished. Okay, everyone? I'm pretty, pretty happy with the colouring. I'm pretty happy with the composition in general. It's all kind of working nicely together, isn't it? So I'm, f I'm fairly happy with that. Um, you could, if you wanted to, brighten some of the trees and add more snow to them, but I think I'll just leave it because it's quite nice now. The warm colours going into cool colours. It all looks quite nice, doesn't it? So I think I'll leave that. So, um, yeah, let me just turn the camera here so you can see me. Uh, let me turn the screen on the camera. I'm getting used to this camera. It's brilliant. So, yeah, there we are. Part one finished. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Lovely colours. Go and get your brushes. Go and get a bit of canvas. Have a mess around with some brushes and some paints and don't be, don't be worried, don't be afraid, that's not going to work out. I had no clue how this was going to turn out. Um, luckily, it turned out pretty good. I'm happy enough with this so far. <sighs> Let's hope part two is the same, all right? Go and grab a cup of tea, coffee, and uh, have some fun. I'll see you very, very soon in part two.